Good morning. This is the Redevelopment Authority meeting of Wednesday, July 7th. And um, starting to my right, let's introduce yourselves, please. Uh, Steve Harrison, Dave Saxon, Amy Horse. I am Roberta Falicki Paneski, the chair. Chad Pelishek, planning director. And Janet with City Development. And in our audience, we have. Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Community TV media. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, we will call the meeting to order, and if everybody stands, we'll pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Does anyone on the authority have a potential conflict of interest? Hearing none, we shall begin. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the June 16th, 2021 meeting. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any additions or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, discussion and possible action on the quarterly update of business loans, and you have a document in front of you. Chad, you want to talk us through some of this? Sure, so the um, first page, everything that's in green is current. Um, a couple things to note is that the, park, the Paja Properties one, near the fourth from the bottom, was paid off in, uh, paid in full in April. Um, so that one will be leaving us. Um, E-Power Manufacturing is um, one that's past due. And um, the finance department has not received a response when they contacted them on two occasions. They did send a partial payment of $1,500 last week, but their monthly payment is $2794.12. So I think at this stage, we would um, recommend not taking any action on it. They did make a partial payment. Maybe it's a cash flow issue or something, timing of contracts or something of that nature. So we'll see if it continues and next quarter address it. Okay, thank you. And <clears throat> on the, on back. the back. So Old World Creamery, they, um, they make regular payments. It's, I think it's the timing of when they cut their checks and when we invoice them. Um, because they're always a month behind, but they catch up. So the finance department is going to be issuing monthly invoices now through our Munis system. So they're hoping that that will get them on uh, track. So I don't think we need to take any action on them. We game on, um, they've attempted to contact them twice, haven't received a response or a payment. Um, so I don't know if that one continued. The We Game On is uh, Justin Webb, uh, Sun Graphic Media, Sun Media, whatever, graphics. Um, he opened up that uh, We Game On Center, down, that gaming facility on Indiana Indian. Avenue. That, you'll recall, they were a number of months behind the last time, and the city attorney's office sent a letter to them, and they did make a payment and get current, but now they are, again, two months past due. Um, and then the last one is HH2 properties. That's forgiven uh, through July yet, so we'll be working with Paul going forward. Okay. Any questions about the? I will just couple loans. just a couple positives from the finance department. Three Sheep sent us a check for twelve thousand nine hundred eighty-three dollars last week. Um, their payment is five thousand. So they. Um, are paid well in advance, and they applied it to the principal through the 1st of uh, December, so they'll work with them to make sure that's what they were intending to do. Um, <clears throat> and the sign shop has not made a late payment. Oh, so the, the sign shop was questioning some late payment fees. Um, we told them that we didn't have jurisdiction to write those late fees off, so we're hoping that they're going to ultimately pay them, but we'll work through that. Okay. I noticed that the report looks 
different than same data, but looks different. Is this the new system or not? Uh, it's a combination, yes. Okay. There will be a, the MUNA system will allow our business loan folks to um, go in on the computer, look at what's due, look at whether they're current, a uh, lot more interactive, and hopefully we'll keep everything together and flowing smoothly. Okay, any other questions? Nothing. Do we need to make a motion? No. I don't think so. Okay. Um, item 3.2, discuss and possible action on the development opportunity related to Portscape Apartments, Portscape Apartments Phase 3 in the South Pier District. We have seen this. Um, we have seen the developer before. This, this project has been in front of us before. We have sent... Uh, the developer back to inquire um, with the businesses on South Pier um, about his development, and he did so. So, Chad, you want to tell us what happened? Joe, are you online? I am. Oh, Thank good. You. Joe Grosh. So, Hi, yes. Roberta. Good morning. So what, what you guys had tasked Joe with was going out and contacting all the businesses on South Pier and making, sharing his proposed plans with them and talking about what his project was. So he has sent notice to every business on South Pier as well as a copy of this map. The city has not received any communication and nor has Joe, I don't believe. Is that correct, Joe? Correct. So at this stage, we're here to talk about your interest in moving forward. And I guess at this stage, what I would do is turn it over to Joe to talk about his proposed plan. I have provided copies to everybody in person on the plan, Joe, so we have them before us. So if you just want to talk about what you're proposing. Sure. The, uh, the total project is 28 units as shown. It's possible that it could be 32 units. Uh, the, uh, well, the, the south building uh, is a 12 unit building that we could say would be closest to, save one, uh, to phase one or would be along Blue Harbor Drive to the south of uh, Lakeview or the old spaceport building, the triple play building. Uh, to the north of the triple play building, uh, we have an eight unit and a 12 unit building. It's possible that those one of those could be uh, an additional four units, so we're just not sure. We have to see on how the how the site lays out. The we're not terribly excited about the building along Lakeview, but we think if we can add a bunch of landscaping along Lakeview, uh, in in whether it's a, you know in front of the right of way or outside of the right of way, I think that building can be a really nice building. It has great views. Uh, on either side of it, just we may have to try to do some taping to uh, block the uh, just that parking lot view off of, off of Lakeview. Uh, we have plenty of parking. We have plenty of green. Uh, that was something that uh, the previous meeting brought up. And we'll be working with the city on the modification of the parking lots. Specifically in regards to that, we're going to be losing a total of 84 stalls. Now, the parking study that both the city and we uh, initiated calls for an allowable reduction of parking of up to 150 stalls. So we're losing only half of what they are telling us is our allowable cushion. So in our perspective, I think that's a, that's a very nice buffer. And Chad, did we share the technical memorandum from TADI uh, to the RDA members so they can see that? Yes, it was attached to the agenda item. Okay, good. Does anybody have any questions? I do. Um, this is a one story or a two story? This is the exact same as the existing product that's out there. Okay. The only thing that might be, we might work with the city on to see if, if they want some different variation of colors, but it's the exact same building. All right. Thank you. Any questions from the so committee? Sorry, Chair. Go so, ahead. Joe, do you want to address what your intent, your ask is as it relates to purchasing the land? Sure. 
when we did the original project, uh, we had our, our, our deal that we was negotiated was uh, $3,000 per developed unit. And for that deal four years ago, we, we had a $1 a week for 10 years. And then the land payment was due upon uh, uh, expiration of 10 years. Uh, what we're looking for here is the $3,000 a unit for the land purchase. And then we'll, we'll close uh, as soon as we receive our uh, approvals with the city of Sheboygan. So we're looking at the same dollar amount, but we, 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 we are not looking for the payment terms as we had on the original phase. So it'll be between, I think right around, uh, uh, right around, if we go 32 units, it'll be right around $96,000 for the land. But the purchase is very important as we do own and have successfully purchased uh, the other property for Portscape. So this is an important that we have this as a purchase. I recall from the original Portscape development that it was phased in um, will you phase building one and building two in for this, or will they both no. be built simultaneously? Yeah, we're. I think Roberto, we're going to try to. Uh, this will be something that I don't think will happen this year. I think it's possible, but I don't think. I just don't think. You know, I just don't think we have enough time. Um, but we would we would undergo construction more than likely next year and have occupancy for 2023. So we had all buildings would go at once. Okay. Chair, so if that's RDA has any other questions, we're happy to answer them. Otherwise, I think the motion is gonna to be to direct staff to work with the developer on a purchase and sale agreement and bring that final document back to this body. Chad, I guess I would just have a question just about valuations. You know, this is a historic uh, legacy price and is there any, should we be looking at fair market value now? And I'm not sure how that's determined, but it just seems 96,000 for the size of that property in a, you know, I think phase one for Portscape uh, and phase two might've been more risky just because of things. So, you know, we were looking at that point in time for development and now it seems like it's, it's probably more stable and should we be going back and just asking uh, because if we're not willing to subsidize other folks in development we shouldn't probably be looking to subsidize these folks sure we can have a conversation i can have a conversation with mike rota um, there is a you know standard five dollars per square foot charge that was on the inside so i can find out what that equates to to that three thousand dollars Okay. per unit um, and and then talk to Mike Groda and see what he's got the other stuff assessed at and see how it compares. And that will come back to this committee? Yes, it could. Um, if it's somewhere in the, you know, if it's somewhere in the same range, we may um, work on a, trying to iron out some details in a development agreement and then bring that back, um, or we can come back before that, whatever way you guys want to handle it. Yeah, well, and the other piece was the use of green space that you know can't be recaptured, and I think we talked about green space along the river, we talked about parking, and what impact that was going to have on the local businesses, and I, I don't know if it's proper to say no response is a positive response, um, because was it only a letter that went out or was there actual interviews done for, for the business owners? Joe, Joe, didn't you talk to businesses first and then you sent letters? No, what we did is we sent out a letter. We sent out the, uh, the site plan. We also sent out the uh, included in, in with included with the package, the, uh, the, the parking evaluation that was completed. So anybody who, who got that packet, who cared to read it, had a very detailed analysis and explanation of what we were doing, why we were doing it, and what the impacts on parking would be. And we've heard no comments. I mean, I guess we can go in and talk to each individual business, but 
I mean, that's how the city. No, I mean, it's usually due diligence. I mean, we ask them to do that. They did it. Um, I, I just know that, you know, a lot of times with mail, you know, no. does it get appropriately addressed or is it, you know, something that now is shocking because somebody didn't take the time to, at least on the proximity of where this is located, knock on a few doors and say, hey, do you have an issue? Of course, at that point in time, it might create an issue just because you're asking the question, but, you know, you'd rather have that done now rather than later. But if the rest of the committee is comfortable that the mailing is adequate, then uh, that should address the parking. Wasn't the um, mailing list attached? I thought I yeah, saw that. yeah. The only, you know, the, I think the only concern really that I have is what's identified as parking lot number one and, you know, Harry's Prohibition Bistro and Dumper Dan's are probably the two businesses that use that a lot. Um, they still have the parking closest to their restaurant available. Um, and I, you know, even driving down there on 4th of July, I mean, there, these lots aren't, weren't even full for the 4th of July. So, um, you know, I just think that, I think using the back half of these lots and trying to keep it closest to the business. Likewise, parking lot number two, uh, Anglers Avenue staff and stuff work, use it and then walk around the, you know, units to there. So I, you know, it's accommodating the people that really need it. And I, and I think from a planning perspective, the, the buildings are located such that they're the least impactful to the existing parking given the nature of where the businesses are and the businesses that generate a lot of traffic. Okay, thoughts, comments? All right, we are looking for a motion to approve moving forward and directing the staff to uh, draft a purchase and sale after consultation with Mr. Groda. Yes. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Moved by Soxie. Is there a second? Before second. I, oh, okay, there's a second. Trey. Uh, I guess Good morning, the... Trey. You came out of nowhere. <laughs> good morning. I've been here. But good morning. Good morning. Just under discussion, uh, Madam Chair, the so the, the the purchase price. It is not coming back to the RDA once they do the market analysis, or you're you're saying that's going to just be entrusted to the committee or or to Chad's group to negotiate that. I would say let us negotiate it, and we'll yeah. bring the final agreement Document. back. And if you don't agree with it, we can amend it at that stage. Perfect. Yeah, Fine. it will be in the original. It will be in the document that we need to approve. Correct. Okay, so we will see it again before we vote on it. Yeah. All right, any other questions? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye, motion carries. Thank you so much and good luck on your next endeavor, sir. Everybody, I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay. Um, 3.2, uh, oh, we did 3.2. Chair will entertain a motion to go into closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.851E of the Wisconsin statutes, where competitive and bargaining sessions require a closed session related to a development opportunity on the former Kepsel property bordered by the Sheboygan River, South 10th, and Indiana. This is a roll call vote. Is there a motion? So moved, Harrison. It's been it's been moved by Amy and seconded oh, by Steve to go into closed session. Steve. Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Trey. Aye. Thank you very much. Chair votes aye. Um, we are in closed session. And we will now <coughs> close the TV and close the doors in the chamber. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>